Hello, uh, I'm Anya Magliano. I'm half Italian. Yeah, you might have guessed that from the surname. It's a very Italian surname. It means I always end up having the same sort of conversations about it. They go, oh, Maliano. Is that an Italian name? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, no way. I'm actually Italian myself. Yeah, I know, Dad. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Uh, my parents are divorced by means of a cheer. Has anyone here got parents that are divorced? <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> What, that very on brand. Um, you guys might recognize this advice. People love to give it to you, especially if it happens when you're quite young. They go, well, don't worry. There's a silver lining. At least you'll get twice as many presents at Christmas. Sorry, but I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> like, I'll have no model of a loving relationship, but I'll have two sets of Sylvanian families. <laughs> That's two sets of families more functional than mine. I don't <laughs> want it. I live at uni now, uh, it's great. It saves on some of the like awkward situations that you can get into when you're living at home. Like if you're watching a film with your parents and a sex scene comes on, you know what I mean? Yeah, I should stop suggesting we watch porn as a family. <laughs> I, joke about por I joke about porn, I wanna clarify, I am a feminist. Yeah, I love feminism, I reckon it's gonna be huge, so keep your eyes peeled. Uh, it taught me a lot about myself. Uh, for a long time, I had no idea what was going on, like, down here. Like, I knew I had one hole for weeing. Sure, why not? <laughs> he knows. He kno you, wait, you don't know. Uh, one hole for pooing. Our old friend, the poo. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then what? Like a USB port? In hindsight, probably would have been more useful. Um, but yeah, I've struggled to reconcile like the idea of porn with like the idea of feminism and the conclusion I've come to is that the best thing to do is to just watch point of view porn but from the point of view of the woman during doggy. <laughs> so just walls, it's just walls. Um, it's great. Uh, I think like with sort of Porn, I don't, I can't really get into it actually, like to be honest. I find it sets you up on like these stupid expectations like that women will be shaved as if having like a hairless vagina is this sort of like gives you this sexy appeal. Sorry, but the only thing that having a hairless vagina, vagina, having a hairless vagina gives you is a rash so bad that it looks like you've tried to write a welcome message in braille. <laughs> it's not a good look. Uh, yeah, but I'm an adult. I'll be the first to say it. Uh, I've got a to-do list now. Yeah, okay, don't you, you're all collected with your lives, that's fine. Uh, it's great, like, the problem is I keep forgetting that I have a to-do list. Uh, and so I'll just be going about my day, just doing the things, and then later on I'll remember I have a to-do list and I'll have to retrospectively add all the things that I've done to the to-do list to cross it off straight away. Yeah, that's not a to-do list anymore, that's a memoir, right? <laughs> it probably won't surprise you at this point to learn that I'm not great at dirty talk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I found this out on a one-night stand I had. Uh, and before you judge me for having a one-night stand, you've got to kiss a lot of frogs before you find your prince, you know? Except, obviously, in this case, it's more like you've got to have sex with a lot of frogs before you realise it's way easier with men. Biologically and emotionally. Um, I was working at this venue in the Edinburgh Fringe. Uh, the, there was a comedian performing. He was really funny, like he really smart, and I fancied him loads. So I, uh, I slept with the bartender um, <laughs> from downstairs. And so we're there having sex, and he's sort of thrusting away. You know what they're like. Uh, I'm also there. <laughs> uh, I've had sex, and he is, he decided to say something. Uh, and I personally don't think dirty talk is for me, but like there are three situations where I'd be comfortable with sort of talking in the bedroom. Uh, number one, if one member of the couple suffers an untimely cramp in the buttock or thigh, fair play. Uh, number two, uh, if one member of the partaking couple needs to stop and write the anecdote down for some stand up. <laughs> number three, if it's getting late and you need to wrap up the job interview. What he said was none of those things. He said, and he said it about 20 minutes in, uh, it feels so good to be inside you, right? 
Yeah. I don't doubt it's true, but it just felt like an afterthought. Do you know what I mean? Like, 20 minutes in. I'm so sorry. I feel like, I feel like we've... G- I won't go into it. I don't have time. Um, yeah, it felt like an afterthought. And it was weird because I, I didn't really know how... The ultimate effect was that of like a moon pig greeting card. It was a nice whimsical thought, but it was devoid of any meaning. And I was sort of racking my brains for a response because I felt like I had to say something. And I thought maybe I could go down the lines of saying something quite like uh, humble because that's always good, like self-deprecating. Sort of like, oh, you know, can't take credit for that. Runs in the old family. (laughs) Us Maglianos, we're renowned for our gratifying genitals. (laughs) Probably a bit too wordy. Uh, So then I thought maybe I could go for something a bit cooler, but keep the, like, humbleness and say, you know, oh, uh, cool. I've been doing my pelvic floor exercises. Great to hear they're paying off for you, sir. Uh, (laughs) Again, probably not great. And then I remembered I'd read something earlier in the week, advice on this very topic in the Bible. Um, (laughs) And it said, treat others as you'd like to be treated. Uh, So I thought, great. I'll just do what I would say to him. But the problem is I thought, you know, I'd probably like quite something quite like vanilla and kind and nice. But I thought, you know what? That's just what I want. I'll do it. Uh, So I took the plunge and I said, (sighs) your parents' divorce wasn't your fault. (laughs) And needless to say, he came instantly. (laughs) Thank you, guys. Have a great evening. (laughs) 